Hi everyone, um, we've got the pleasure of having Amy Jean Metcalf with us today. Um, she's the head coach of Magic Waikato Bay of Plenty. Um, and Amy Jean has represented New Zealand in lots of sports. So she's been a silver fern herself, um, a Magic player and also um, a touch player. So you're pretty good at touch as well. So played New Zealand touch, Waikato touch and um, was recognised as one of the world's best touch players in your time. Um, so you've had a pretty pretty awesome career in many sports. Um, how are you today, Amy Jean? I'm good, thanks. A little bit cold today, actually. We've had a bit of nice weather and now it's cold. Yeah, yeah, finally winter kicking in. Yeah. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about your coaching journey? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I always say to people I kind of just fell into coaching a little bit. I, I first started when I was at university and um, went to coach a couple of school teams. Um, really just to, I think, I think one of the schools might have been paying some petrol vouchers or something and as a poor student it was quite handy to get some of that. And yeah, and then I, I sort of just kept coaching. I finished my degree and went into teaching and you know, as most teachers do who are interested in sport, you get into coaching at your school, so coach school teams right through my teaching career. And then when I finished playing, um, moved into coaching at club level. So Verdets was always my club. Um, Maris Verdets now, I think they are. And so I yeah, answered an SOS call from um, the, the beautiful committee ladies to come and help coach the Prem team for a couple of years, which I did and really enjoyed. Uh, and then, yeah, I just, I guess that was the first time I thought maybe coaching could be something that I'd like to do beyond the school or club level. Yeah. So I was kind of on the lookout for um, coaching opportunities that would work in with family. When I, you know, I had a young family, so we all know coaching's not always the best, but with our families. Yeah. And I saw the assistant coach for the Magic come up a few years ago and decided to apply for it um, and, and was fortunate enough to get it. So the rest is history really with a couple of years assistant coach to Mark Forsyth, which is a really cool learning journey and it was great being back in that performance environment again. I really enjoy it and um, yeah, then decided to apply for the Magic role a couple of years ago and so now yeah. my second yeah year as head coach and yeah it's definitely got us challenges really didn't see myself here probably 20 years ago but and I don't know how long it lasts. I, I don't know that it's a long-term thing but um, at the moment it's a great the great job to have I love it yeah awesome so is that is your position with them full-time it is a full-time role um, and during the sort of magic season which runs from about November to well, this year it's a bit longer. Um, yeah. this. Uh, that, that's yeah, very much full time. And then when in the off season, there's a, a lot of planning and we'll review first and then planning that goes on. But I'm also part of my role is to do community work. So, which is also a nice part to be involved with. So I help out with some of the pathway programs within the zone um, with our under 16s, under 18s and emerging talent, emerging talent squads. And um, yeah, it, I'd really just, if people request some help or want me to come and take their little year three primary school team, I'm more than happy to do it. It's a cool part of the job. Awesome. Cool. So like, is that more in, in your off season where you'll do that kind of community based stuff? Yes. Yeah, so like last year, our season finished in July. So I'm from about July to October. Um, you know, if requests came into the zone office or people approached me directly to um, see if I could help out. Where I could, I definitely did. Um, sometimes it's speaking engagement, sometimes it's coaching, sometimes it's just um, helping with planning um, the community programs um, through our community team in the zone. Um, it's not really um, a formalised part of the role, it's sort of on an as request basis. Yeah. yeah that, that takes out most of the off season, which is about three months. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I got to get both of that kind of like high performance stuff and then jump back into the community, eh? 
Yeah, it is. And I think the community stuff, it's quite nice because you just sort of turn up and then you leave. And um, most of the time, I think pretty, people are pretty happy that you've been able to give up some time. Yeah, but it's, exactly, you get yeah. to meet lots of different people and you remember, actually, I think the hardest coaching I've ever done is, you know, that year three, four, five age group. That's yeah. um, pretty challenging coaching, but it's also pretty enjoyable as well. Yeah, yeah. Can't just tell them to do something. They'll listen straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, line up in a straight line. That's that's an issue. <laughs> um, so, what did you do before your coaching in terms of like your um, I don't know, like your working career? And... Yeah. So, um, throughout school, probably like most um, students, well, a lot of students, I had a plan of what I wanted to do, and I definitely knew I wanted to go to university. So, I I studied. Um, subjects that would lead to accountancy and then I got to year 13 and realized I really wasn't cut out to be an accountant and I yeah. didn't think of it worse. Um, so I remember actually Lynn Parker or Lynn Gunson who was at the school that I went to, the teacher there, she said look do what you love and what I loved was sports so I went into um, went and studied sports science at Waikato University and came out um, with a degree from there but I didn't want to be a personal trainer. Yeah. I didn't really know what to do with it. So I yeah. ended up working back at my old school at Melville High as a sports coordinator. It was a part-time role um, and I really loved it. But I think the couple of years I had there sort of opened up the door to teaching for me. I'd never really thought about being a teacher, but I really enjoyed being in that school environment and working with the kids. So uh, then I went back to university, did a one-year postgrad teaching diploma and then came out as a PE and health teacher oh, and nice. probably for, for I don't know maybe about 10, 10 years I think I probably taught full-time and then um, had the kids sort of so I sort of worked part-time in, in schools either as a teacher or in sports departments and yeah I finished probably the, the four years before I went, came into the magic environment, I was at St. Peter's as the um, director of sport, which is a really, really busy job, but really cool um, job to be in. Mm. Nice, so coaching and teaching, pretty similar roles anyway, aren't they? Yeah, I think they are. And I was speaking to some coaches um, a few weeks ago about my, like my pathway into coaching. Because yep. Obviously, New Zealand has a pathway um, through their courses um, to reach, you know, for those aspiring to reach a certain level. And I, I haven't done, um, I've done a little bit of that, but not a lot of it. But I, yep. my message kind of was that your pathway, my pathway through um, getting my degree and through teaching, my experiences with teaching, have really covered a lot of the similar um, modules and things that I would have done through the New Zealand pathway as well as my experiences as a player in those environments so um, while my pathway has been a little bit different I, I still feel like my the education that I've had and my experiences and work have prepared me pretty well for where I'm at at the moment. Yeah just like, like a cross credit type thing. <laughs> yeah definitely. Um, how have you, how have the girls been, you know, and all the players been in lockdown? Um, and how did you go about keeping that team morale up and keeping them motivated, motivated in that time? Yeah, they, um, they did really well, actually. And at the time of lockdown, we had some pretty good um, systems in place. So we, our team was split into committees and each committee was made up of players and a staff member that were responsible for different aspects of our team. So there was, you know, like the, the communication team and a social committee and a, you know, a standards committee, uh, things like that. So when we went into lockdown, those committees became really valuable. So they would meet weekly, the little subcommittees, and they would set either tasks or challenges or um, be responsible for keeping people on track. And then at our big weekly team meeting, all those notices and messages and reports would be given so that we kind of stayed in touch in that way and kept everybody on track. And so there was always a, a, a process or a, a line of communication that players had 
to get support or to check in on how each other was doing. So that was really valuable. Um, we've got a great team of staff who, um, you know, helped keep things on, tra on track while we were in lockdown. And um, Barry, our SNC coach, he, you know, he made sure the players still had their programs. Like he's always run his programs online. So even though they couldn't come together, playing together. Yeah, all the programs were online as they always are, and they just he just modified them to suit uh, the fact that people were at home and didn't have access to weights or gyms or mm. even a court in some cases. And so yeah. players had options that they could basically carry on without missing a beat with their training. Um, we did manage to get a little bit of gear out to some of the players um, before lockdown, so they had kind of some basic stuff like. Um, medicine balls or, um, you know, rebounders and um, some of them managed to access their own kind of spin bikes and um, some weights if, if they could. So, yeah, they've, yeah. you know, had three trainings now and they've, they've come back and fitness tested really well, oh, um, training really well. So I think, and, and it feels like we haven't really been apart because we've stayed connected via Zoom and, and different, um, probably mostly via Zoom. It's always nicer to see people face to face, but it did feel like when they all walked into the gym that we, it's not like we hadn't seen them for a long yeah. time. Yeah, we're kind of really lucky to be in a pandemic with this type of communication available to yes. us. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Where would we be without it? Yeah, was there any plans that were kind of really restricted in terms of like having no equipment or um you know maybe lived in an apartment or something really yeah um i think probably most of them are pretty good um or they managed to adapt really well probably the one that found it the hardest was um abigail who came back from australia so she's she, her family's in Australia and that's where she lives. And when we went into lockdown, she went back to Australia. And ah. obviously when she came back here, she had to go into managed um, isolation in Auckland before yep. she was allowed to come home. Yep. Um, and the hotel that she was housed in was in the middle of Auckland city. Mm -hmm. um, the ceilings weren't high enough for her to put in a portable goal in. They yep. wouldn't let her put one up outside. She was only allowed half an hour supervised walk each day. Um, so that was a real challenge. So as soon as she arrived in the hotel, I sort of sent her a list of kind of tasks and questions to go and ask the management. So, you know, where could she train? Yeah. What could she have access to? All those sorts of things. So she managed to find a conference room that she, you know, could train in um, twice a day. And we sent up some equipment for her from oh, Hamilton. Nice. That she could use. Um, so she, yeah, she's a shooter and didn't have access to a goalpost, you know, for two weeks. But yeah, yeah like yeah. she's come back and so far so good. The the shots right. are still looking pretty sweet. So she managed to use a little bit of visualization, which actually <laughs> is a really I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, the best time when visualization tools would come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is your biggest learning? coming out of the um, COVID-19? Oh, quite a few actually. Um, I think like a lot of people, I really enjoyed not rushing around. Um, mm. We lead such busy lives and I think it was nice to wake up and not have any expectation that we had to be anywhere by a certain time, no deadlines, no appointments to keep. Um, obviously kind of kept working yeah. and the kids had their school, but it was in your time. And um, again, like everybody else, you sort of reconnected with basic family life. So cooking and eating meals together, um, mm. helping each other around the house, um, having dinner time conversations, things that probably you always think you'd like to do and then you never have the opportunity. So that was, that was really cool. We've, you know, we decided as a family we were going to try as much as we could around normal life to maintain some of those things. But I think that was a big journey for me that just to, that balance is so important, um, regardless of what role you're in and what pressures you're under, that, um, that balance of family life, which I always knew and I've always 
really valued, but it's yeah, very important. Yeah, and then actually getting to practice, really practice them is, has been yes. it's been good for me too. Yeah. What excites you the most about this season being, because it will be quite different um, mm. for everyone. Is there something that excites you a lot about that? Or I think, um, our, well, for me, our team excites me. They, um, and it's probably no more than before lockdown, but I guess the challenges now that we've been throwing um, a different type of competition with a different format of the draw, different um, games set up in terms of the event itself. There's lots of things about it that are different and what excites me is that I know that our group will respond to it really well, that they um, are pretty adaptable people and I'm excited to see what they can do um, given all this, all the stuff that's been kind of thrown at us. Yeah. And I know, and I'm excited because I think it'll be a positive um, outcome. I think they'll really respond well to it. Yeah, yeah, it will be exciting. It'll be, it'll be exciting to see some sports for starters. <laughs> it'll be exciting to see how they adapt to it, you know, how they adapt. It might reveal their, you know, mental strength as well. So it'll be, it'll be yeah. Exciting. Well, you know, before lockdown, our first, our only game that we had was you know, we found out an hour and a half before the game that it would be a closed stadium and that nobody would be there to watch. And so we didn't really have time to think too much about it. And mm. I thought they adapted really well to that situation. So um, I guess that's an advantage for us is that we've already played yeah. nobody, yeah. effectively. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Would have been so different compared to what you're used to, eh? Yeah, it was quite weird actually. It was very yep. weird walking into the stadium um, with nobody there. It, it did sort of feel like a bit of a practice game or a pre-season game. And so that was the message that we had for each other was that, we, you know, this, this isn't practice and it's not pre-season, it's mm -hmm. the real sort of thing. And um, trying to get that those energy levels right to take the court for the yep. environment. Hmm. So you had a good win um, in that first first game, and so like the girls have come back and they've done their fitness testing, and they so are they looking really good after the lockdown? Yeah, they are, and I think I mean it's early days, and I think a lot of others are just excited to be back, and they're just really keen to get back into it. Um, yeah. And that you know they've missed each other and they've missed netball, so it's all. There's lots of really good energy. So the challenge will be trying to keep that energy or those energy levels going um, as we get further into the, the build up and the competition. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you played lots of sports, obviously, at growing up. So you were really good at netball, really good at touch. Also athletics, you represented New Zealand in athletics mm -hmm. as well. Um, what do you think the benefits of you playing lots of sports were? Yeah, I actually feel like I I didn't play that many sports. I think um, we were well, we didn't really have. I don't remember having a lot of choices when I was growing up. I, you know, in the winter for girls it was netball, and for boys it was rugby. And sports like football and hockey were just so small at the time; they weren't really an option unless you know your parents played or you mm. had a particular interest. So. Um, netball was always there from day dot and um, yeah same in the summer really like I took up athletics because um, I guess I'd shown early ability in athletics and that's why I did it and I was good at it but there weren't really a lot of other sports like the, in terms of team sports particularly there wasn't much at all and I only started playing touch in my last year of high school because that's how new it was to our country. Um, and so, yeah, I don't really feel like I play, played a lot of sports, but I definitely feel like there were, there was a winter season and there was a summer season. And mm. that was really good because yep. there was never, there was never a, a kind of a conflict of, I had to choose netball over touch or touch over netball. So that was really good. And I, yeah, I mean, I dabbled a little bit in volleyball, at um, at high school, but you know, just just socially. But I do think I yeah, I'm a big believer in 
um, playing lots of sports when you're younger. You know, I mean, I wish there was more available when I was younger because I think, uh, not that I necessarily would have made different choices, but um, yeah, I just think it would have been fun to have had a go at lots yeah. of things. Yeah. It's one of those things we've tried to say to the kids, like we don't really care what you play as long as you're doing something. And, you know, if you don't love it, give something else a go. And, yeah, I think they're really lucky to have so many choices now. Yes, yes, there's so many choices. And they do cross over like that, though. Right? Like if there's, they do cross over from summer and winter sports. They seem yeah. to go all year now. More and more, which is, it is, it is a worry, because I think, um, and I think even now, like if some you know you you might have a, a kid that wants to play cricket and touch um and i don't know that that works very yeah. well either so yeah um yeah i don't know what the answer is to to that whether there are just shorter seasons or less practices put in the week and um but yeah i just think yeah the more you can play the better just, mm. just, for, fun. just yeah. for the love of it yeah mm. Um, why do you think community sport is so important? Ah, I think it's where you grow your love of something. Um, mm. I think any, any, anyone who's played sport will tell you it's a good, you know, cool stories of growing up around a field or the courts or watching either older brothers and sisters or aunties and uncles or mums and dads playing sport and just everything around that environment that's mm. pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I think community sports, I mean, that's like the breeding ground, isn't it, of our next best sports people. Yeah. <laughs> and, without, and without really well-organised community programmes, um, we keep less people involved in sport, therefore less people playing as they get older. And regardless of whether they want to be Silver Ferns or All Blacks or whatever it is, um, if they've got if they love their sport and it's well organized they'll keep playing it so community yeah. sports are yeah. massive now, what what are the values that you would most like um like to instill in your players and for them to come away with um i think it, it's changed over the years actually like I used to think I coached because I wanted people to love the sport and keep playing as long as they could or being involved as long as they could. And that sport would give them really cool life skills beyond sport, which I still believe in. But yeah. I think sport, I think at the level I'm coaching it now, the thing that I, I value and I think players need to hear is that they don't, they just have to be um you know they just have to be themselves like if they can finish their careers playing at the top level knowing that they were true to themselves and they expressed themselves as they wanted to play um, without being molded into a particular sort of player or having to do things a particular way then i think they can be really proud of what they've achieved so i think at a performance level that would be the thing that i would want them to you know, when they retire or stop playing, that they can be proud that they were really true to who they were and played the game they wanted to play the way they wanted to play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's really nice, yeah. Um, so for our up-and-coming players, is there something you think everyone can work on? Um, <laughs> uh... I mean, the basics of the game, that's one thing. So if you're just looking at how they play the game, the basics are really important. You know, being able to pass and catch really well, being able to move really well. I think um, we see a, a lot of players coming through the pathway who um, who don't move well, like they got poor running technique or poor jump and land technique. And so then mm -hmm. often can lead to injuries. Um, yeah. So I think being able to move really well, and that's where that variety of sports at a young age is important because doing all yeah. those things helps you to move well. Yeah, um, yeah, good pass and catch. Um, so physically, that you know, those are the main things. But yeah. I think the other thing that you need to have is just a genuine love for what you're doing. So mm. 
um, yeah, whatever sport you're playing, if you love it, then you'll be motivated to do whatever you need to do to achieve your goals, whatever your goals might be. So if your goals are to play with your friends and have a lot of fun and you love it, then that will happen. Um, if your goals are to you know, reach a higher level in playing or umpiring or coaching, if you yeah. love it, then it's, it's never going to feel like hard work. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's not always, I'm not saying it always has to be fun, but you've got to have that genuine love for what you're doing and, you know, then the rest of it's easy. Yeah. Yeah, probably if you, the more you love it, the if you do get disappointed, then it won't be so, I mean, it's easier to pick it, pick yourself back up. Yeah, well, I guess you just, you've got to take the goods with all the bads, you know, and so, um, and there's plenty of highs and lows in sport. That's why, kind of that's why you love it, because you... Yeah can experience the lows and then get to the highs and um, get it so much more rewarding when you get there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. If you're doing it to please other people or because you think you should or because you don't know what else to do, I mean, that's fine, but it's probably not going to keep you in the game for a long time. Eventually you're going to yeah. find something else that's more attractive. And yeah, obviously we want as many people in our game as possible because it's, it's great. Netball's a great yeah. game. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for um, your time and heaps of awesome messages out there for our community. Um, is there anything before we wrap it up that you, any tips or anything else you want to say to our young net community? Um, yeah, I guess um, for this year it's been a bit strange and everybody's, like I, we feel very lucky in the magic environment that we're allowed to get going and playing. So yeah. I guess I think just um, a message of support from all of us to everybody in community netball and community sport to hope that things um, do get up and running really soon, which I'm sure they will. Yeah. And to make the most of the season that's left, I know there'll be some disappointed um, kids because Ames Games isn't happening and yeah. Venus and secondary schools and, yeah. and things like that. But it's a great opportunity just to get out there and enjoy what is left of the season and um, yeah, and know that yeah, we really support everybody in that endeavour from you know centre level organising it all, which can't be easy, right through to the coaches and players who are trying to make it happen as well. But yeah, all the best for the season. We wish you well. Yeah. Thank you. And you guys too will be watching first game on the 19th of June. Yeah, against the Mystics. Nice. We will be watching and supporting and cheering from from our lounges. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm sure we'll hear you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck again for the season. And we will hopefully see you soon in person. Cool. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you.